There is a lesser known parameter for quantifying the structural behavior of a stent, and that is called foreshortening, and it's a measure of the longitudinal recovery of a stent following the removal of the balloon. In this video, I will show you how to extract this value from an abaco simulation. Let us sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. So the first thing we're going to do is to talk about the theory and we we'll start with the stent. So this stent has got nodal points highlighted in, in red at this point. So this is the longitudinal view of the stent and this is the side view looking at the, the stent from the top. So we identify these nodal points as reference node for the top and also the same nodal point as reference node for the bottom. So we're going to use that to work out what the stent length would be. So each node will have a coordinate position M1 and M2 and M3 and M4 for the bottom ones, which we will now use to find the total length of the stent, subsequently use that to find the first shortening. So each node will have its normal coordinate position. So for example, node 1 and node 3 will be used to find using Euclidean norm the length of the stent and we'll do the same thing for node 2 and node 4 again to find the length of the stent. Now there are three stages to this stent deformation. The first stage is of course the unexpanded state where the stent is just exactly as it is. The balloon hasn't been deployed yet. And then the second stage is the fully expanded stent where the balloon makes absolute contact with the stent. We get this stage. And then the final stage is the recall state where the balloon decouples from the stent, leaving the stent in a recall state. So in terms of working out the foreshortening, the two stages that we need will be the recalled and the expanded state. So the kinematics of stent length. So that means how the stent length is changing with time can be generated from a simulation that will show later on for a plot that looks like this. So we're at the beginning here, we have the length in the unexpanded stent. So this stent has a length of 10 millimeters. And then in the fully expanded stent, that length reduces to just around four in the fully expanded stent. There's a lot of reduction, lateral contraction in this material. And then when the stent pressure is removed, there's a recovery of that stent leading to a record length of that. Now the stent for shortening as a parameter can be calculated using this equation which says what is the length in the recall state minus the length in the expanded state divided by the length in the expanded state. So what this basically is trying to quantify how much recovery of the length of the stent is achievable following the removal of the balloon during the stent deployment procedure. So the reference literature that we're going to use the publication of mine so if you can get hold of it, it will help you learn a little bit more about this if this is the kind of content that you like please do subscribe to this channel so when content like this are made you'll be the first to see it the aim of this channel is really to help people get create effective computational modeling solution and so this stent modeling is one of those again i'd like you to leave a comment of what you think about this process and if there is many video you want me to make please do let me know and i'll consider them so let's get into abacus as we get started with this modeling so this is a stent that we're going to be modeling with so it's got curved a diamond shape cell and it's got a lot of holes in it you know so this is intentional because we want to see a lot of final deformation uh, laterally to this stent so the first thing we need to do if we go back to the part module this is the name that i've given to the stent the diamond stent so we'll go straight to the set under the set in the part module so i've already identified these two nodal sets so i've also already picked them up when setting up this model but if you want to just create them so it's quite simple all you need to do double click on the set and then we're going to call this okay let's say just top ref point so we can create that either by looking at the geometry or the nodal set it's better to try and do the nodal set switch on the node so that you can actually pick up the point so if i continue so i want to pick up this point and then on the other end i'll pick up pressing down shift to pick up the other point you can see okay fine so this is done so you do the same for the top and the base and i've already done this so i'll just delete that so once you've set this up the next thing we need to do is to find the numbers the node level for these things so all we need to do is okay i'm going to zoom in directly to this one here so this is this particular node level so i'll go to view part display option under mesh show node level so you could see the node level for this one is 124 124 at the top we know that 124 at the top so i'll deactivate that and then i'll go back to the full view of the system now at the bottom ref there is also one that is right there at the bottom so we zoom into that particular one on that same side 
you know so 124 so if we zoom in there and then check again so what we we'll find here is that for this other case is 104 so what we know that at the top here is 124 and at the bottom on the other end is 104 so we know that so we'll go on and do the same on this other side so once you set that up the next thing you need to do is to think about the history output that you want to use to track what's happening in this time so we, so i'm going to say top ref history output so something like that let's just do that so under model so we look for the top reference point and the history output that you're going to be using is found rather under around here so we basically we're looking at the coordinates so the three coordinate position coordinate one two and three which means the x y and z position of this material so that gives you the top ref so we'll do the same for the bottom ref so bottom reference history output so this way we are tracking the bottom ref and top reference history output again i've already done that so i'll just delete that so these are the two key things you need to add to your already send stand setup if you want to learn how to set up the stand this is the video that i've made showing you the whole setup of creating the balloon and setting it up now once you've done all that so there is clearly a radial load that we we'll put on the sample 0.95 the diameter of this stand is about two so it's nearly 100 percent radial expansion on this material so once you've done that then you submit the job and let's look at the result that you get okay so this is the result that you generate from this so if we just set it up to to run so the animation so you see initially there's this lateral contraction of this material and then once balloon goes away the system deflects so if we just stop around this stage so this this is the deflected record state so the balloon detaches leaving only the stent in its record state so what we want to do is we want to find what's the difference between so the fully expanded state and the record state so that we can then find what the full shortening on this material would be now to do that it's quite straightforward so all we need to do is to go to the create xy data we already have a history output that we are tracking so what we're going to do here is to combine what's happening at the top and at the bottom so remember that we found out that there's a combination between 104 and 124 the top and the bottom they are on the same side so we'll connect them so for x axis 104 124 y axis 104 124 z axis and then we'll plot that so instantly we get a plot that shows what we have here now we're going to extract this and bring it into excel for this current plot so that we can then do some manipulation of that to ultimately determine our stress okay so this is the data that we get from excel so this is the time data this is the x data time data another x data for the second node so what we're going to do is we're going to remove all the time data leaving only one time axis and all the other values so i'm going to copy control to select or control c to copy so i'll copy that i've already prepared an excel spreadsheet that we're going to use for this analysis so let's look at that so this is the excel sheet that we've already created so I'll just paste that information here so this is a template again this excel sheet will be available for you to download in the description section of this video so please get hold of that if you want so if you look at what we have here so the original length is 10 and the expanded length is calculated and the recall length is also calculated and then we'll go on to find the for shortening so if you look at what's going on here so for shortening basically is the recall length minus the expanded length divided by the expanded length so if we then move on as well so you end up finding that the kinematics of the stent in this proximal distal position looks like this on the left so basically again you start at 10 it goes down to 4 and then it goes back to around 5 and then we're going to go back to abacus and then we'll do the same so if we go back to abacus history output as well so now we're looking at combination of 89 and 139 which is the other side 89 and 139 and then 89 and 139 so so we've got all that and then you plot it so it gives you the same similar result again you go through the process of using excel to extract the raw data so this is the raw data con consisting as usual of time and the data so we're going to just remove all the time data as previously and then we're going to control a and control c to copy so here we are in the excel sheet so in the second part so we'll paste that data there so we've got every of the information so the node 2 and node 4 oriented in the y-axis 
accordingly and everything is fine so we get the same result and we get the kinematics of stent length as well together and also we calculated the for shortening now if we put a comparison plot of everything together so you can see how the two compare so the kinematics of stent length is the same in both cases uh, the values are comparable there's a slight 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 change between the foreshortening between on the two sides of the material other structural parameters that you may also be interested in are things like the elastic recoil or dog boning effect if those are what you're interested in these two videos will help you to extract this from my backus thanks for your interest in this video and i'll see you in the next bye bye